What is a flare and understanding the flares? Real quickly, this is outside today, January 17th, as you are going to see, look at that up here. That's because of the camera, the light in the camera. But look what's appearing in the sky. It's a shape that we often see when we're filming outside with the light, but I just thought that was a little weird. Cool, weird. We see a lot of things with the camera. It doesn't mean it's things that are not normal. Sometimes it's things that we don't understand, right? It's like a snowflake or something like that. I just didn't understand why the light was moving around. So uh, Chickadee Channel asked me, Bruce, can you mention more about the flares and how they work? And uh, yes, of course, with pleasure. I've mentioned it many a times in the very beginning of the video, but of course I have to re-mention it. And uh, you guys know that I love it when you suggest things or you ask me, uh, questions and I can integrate this in the video. So thanks to Chickadee Channel and thanks for being a member, Chickadee, and all the generous contributions for being on Patreon for everything you guys and gals do to help this channel grow. That is a very scary sun. Is the sun flashing? Yes. Finally confirmed that it's not the camera. And I'm telling you, it was flashing a lot. We're going to see a lot of sun flashing at the same time as we get a little basic course in what these flares represent, the different classes. There are always sunspots on the sun at all times. And of course, little smaller explosions. When, we, when they say little, they're smaller than the X-class flares, but they're not smaller. What do I mean by an X-class flare? We have A-class flares, B, C-class flares, M-class flares, and the largest are the X class flares. Just last week, we got an X 1.9, an X 1.4. I mean, an X class flare is starting to get big, but of course, X 1 is a lot uh, less dangerous than the X 2, X 3, X 4. And you've rarely heard me talk about the A and B classes, even the C classes. Right now and throughout last year and this year, we've seen some C classes, but especially some M and X classes. What are the differences? Well, solar flares, first of all, are large explosions. And this comes from the surface, right on the sun. When it hits in the chromosphere and it happens and it emits intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation. And that's what happens when solar flares, corona mass ejections and flashes can happen. All different um, intensities, right? So the intensity of the explosion, that's what's going to determine what classification that the flare actually belongs to. So the most powerful are the X-class flares, and then they're followed, like I said, by the M, the C, the B, and the A. A solar flare will occur when magnetic energy builds up in the solar atmosphere and is released suddenly. Not all solar flares are harmless, though, to our Earth. While Earth's magnetic field prevents widespread death from solar radiation, the sheer electromagnetic power of a flare could disrupt our power grid. Internet connections are also affected. Other communication devices like phones, as I was mentioning the other day here on Earth, resulting in chaos and potentially even death. In space, when these flares occur, they can go for days of having weak signals being read. They can't read the signals, so it can even disrupt the satellites also. They say, fortunately, no matter what, flares do not have a significant effect on us here on Earth. The Earth's atmosphere, more or less, it acts like a shield that prevents the cosmic radiation from reaching us. These can be measurable effects at ground level, but the amount of radiation is pretty insignificant. But last year, there was a hole in the magnetosphere and those particles from the sun, electromagnetic radiation, 
did enter our atmosphere and it caused pink auroras to appear at the poles. So with that said, if they're using CERN, HARP, and whatever means that they are manipulating the Earth's ionosphere and it's affecting the magnetosphere, well, where it says as a fact that it's insignificantly dangerous when the flare occurs, it would be very dangerous if our atmosphere or the magnetosphere was down. So it works a lot like a force field, really like in a movie, right? Like where they bring the force field down to let someone enter Earth's atmosphere. Maybe that's how the UFOs are actually entering Earth, and then they put the force field back up. So like the Richter scale, for earthquakes, we have scales that range from 1 to 10 with the classes. In the sun's case, it is so. A, B, C, M, X, and it can go all the way to X10, which hopefully we'll never see, because if we do, I won't be able to report it afterwards. The fastest Earth-directed CMEs can reach our planet in as little as, get ready for it, no, not an hour. The trolls are always wrong, 15 to 18 hours. Slower CMEs can take several days to arrive. As I told many people that it took three days for one to arrive. And they were like, no, it takes 24 hours. They're getting mixed up with the difference between solar storms, corona mass ejections, and sun flashes. Not the same. CMEs can take several days to arrive. They also expand in size as they propagate away from the sun, and larger CMEs can reach a size comprising nearly a quarter of the space between Earth and the sun by the time it reaches our planet. So when there's a solar flare, because, you know, solar storms, flares, CMEs, they look different in space, and they have differences in the way they affect nearby planets. It would take eight minutes for light from a flare to reach Earth, but the expelled material from the sun would take, as I said, hours up to several days. And everyone, thanks for the generous contributions and thanks for watching the videos. Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon Disclosure's coming soon